Welcome to the Aceman, everybody. It's time to go behind the funny. This is Scott Higgins. And this is Ace Aceto. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for downloading us. Thank you for subscribing. We appreciate it so very much. And if you have a moment, please give us that five-star written review wherever you download your podcast. It's a great way to help the podcast. If you want to help us out another way, tell a friend. We all learn about podcasts from our friends' recommendations, and that's a way you can help us out by recommending us to a friend. And the last way, if you really enjoy the show, is to go to our Patreon page and become a patron. And that is at www.patreon.com forward slash behind the funny. And what that will get you, it's one simple giving level, $5 a month. That will get you a T-shirt or a mug, some sort of merchandise, as well as unlocking bonus content that only our patrons can access. Thank you so much for supporting us. If you want to reach out, you got a question for us, you got a comment, anything, please send us an email at behindthefunnypod at gmail.com. And now, enjoy the show. Be careful. Be careful. He's, 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 and, he's, and, and Scott Higgins, both of them coked up out of their minds. <laughs> Listen to you. <laughs> Down in the basement. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think we should call this the acement. The acement, yes. yes. Yeah, what do you oh. think there, huh? I like that. I the acement you. studios. Oh. Excuse me, I'm drinking beer. Hold on a second. We, we usually drink bourbon on our end <laughs> yeah, right. the podcast, so That's all right. feel free to enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shoot an eight ball if you want. We don't care, as long as it's good stories. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Take Take two. two. <laughs> yes. Uh, We're four minutes late because you, you, Ace forgot to go live. You know, I wish this stuff was recorded for a oh, blooper yeah. reel no sometimes. Shit. But thank you so much for joining us, uh, Ace and I, as I so wittingly said. I was being very witty a few minutes ago with my, we're on a double date for our bourbon this week. Yeah, but well, anyway, our bourbon dates this week. Sloppy seconds is Noble what we're Oak on. and Four Roses. Four Roses. Barrel. Clinkies. So we're not quite as excited as we were five minutes ago. No. but. But hey, you guys missed it. You guys know us, and you know we drink good bourbons. So That's Noble right. Oak, Four Roses, Small Batch, excellent bourbons. Add them to your collection. Yes. Um, but we uh, hope you guys have been enjoying the show. We've had some great guests recently, and we are going to add to that tonight with another great guest. Yeah, so I, you guys know I love when we get someone on that's been brought up on the show before. You should say that sometimes. This guy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to say your it, point. I say it every time. Um <laughs> No, but uh, I'm going to tell a story, and I, I'm wondering if he'll remember this. So uh, when he comes out of the green room after I tell this, we'll, we'll find out. But uh, So I don't know. It was probably 20-something years ago. I was going down to Florida. I got a sister who lives down in Fort Myers, and I was going down to Florida to visit her for about a week. I think my nephew was graduating high school or something. And I, my sister kept saying, oh, you should do the comedy club down here in Fort Myers when you're down here. And I was like, all right, well, get me the name of the club and I'll reach out to whoever books it. And so, I don't know, I spent probably three months reaching out. This is how long ago it was, Scott. I sent a bio, a headshot, and a video cassette. VHS tape. <laughs> Remember those days? I sent a VHS you, tape to this club. You, you sent out your media kit. <laughs> it was my press kit. Your yeah. press kit. And I sent it to the guy that was running the club and never heard back, never heard back. So I fly down, I'm staying at my sister's and she says, oh, how did you make out with this club? And I said, ah, the guy never got back to me. I reached out to him a bunch of times. And so she said, well, you know, there's another, I think they do comedy out on Sanibel Island, which is the island like yeah. right off the coast of, of Fort Myers. So I was like, all right, well, while I'm down here, I'll, I'll reach out. So I reach out. I talk to the guy that books it. Wicked nice guy. I wish I could remember his name. I only remember the, the guy that ignored me. <laughs> As we all do. I may or may not name drop later on in the episode. As but, we all do. Because he's still around. And really? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a whole other story. All right. Whoop. So here's what happened. Ace needs more bourbon. The guy. <laughs> no, so I go to the Santa Bell Island Comedy Club. And the headliner there was our guest tonight. The feature 
was the guy who blew me off from the other comedy club. The booker of the other comedy well, club there was you go. featuring at this club. There you go. I come off stage from doing a guest set, and he goes, oh, wow, you're really funny. That was great. I was like, yeah, you would have known if you didn't ignore my fucking tape from three months ago. And he, he was like all flustered and stuff. But the guy who was headlining that night was hilarious and an awesome, awesome comic. And then... Our friend Mary Ellen, who we had on a couple of weeks ago, you know, she moved down to Florida about six, seven months ago. She just had him on a show. And this guy is like, you know, you've heard us talk about Don Gavin and Steve Sweeney in Boston. This guy is like the Don Gavin and Steve Sweeney all rolled up into one down in Florida. So we want to welcome to Behind the Funny Podcast, Mr. Lou Angel Wolf. Oh, there he man. Is. That's a that that's a what a lovely intro. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I you know you got to live long. up to that shit yeah. now, Lou. Yeah. Well, yeah, live up yeah. to that. Well, I have my seltzer water, so I'll be belching and telling stories. No worries. We love belching. Then you're the perfect guest. Stories. You're exactly. the perfect guest. Then you guys are. Uh, uh, we'll get started here in just a second. But you're, yeah. you guys are bourbon aficionados. Yes. Yeah, 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 kind of. We kind of became uh, them. One of the most, one of the best ones I found, and this is from uh, Mark Klein. Mm-hmm. Who's a Kentucky bourbon? He does. He I don't know, he gets a Christmas card from Jack Daniels every year. Or really? Something. Anyway, yeah, he's like uh, he turned me on to Old Weller. Yep. You hip yep. with it? I know man, it very it, well. Boy, you know, it's, ounce it, for ounce, man. That's a it's great. It's a deal. fantastic bourbon, and it's become very hard to get because it's become so popular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it. Yeah. Okay. It's at be- least up here. Yeah, up in this area, it's very difficult to get. It, it's delicious. Um, it's made by the same people that make uh, Pappy Van Winkle. Oh, okay. And make Blantons yep. and make the other popular brands. But uh, oh, yeah. okay. Well, very good. Weller well, and think- Old Weller, and as well a Reserve. Uh, there's three or four different Wellers, and they're all excellent. Excellent. Good. Bourbons. Good. Okay. They well, actually. It, it, they actually have it at the cigar bar that we're going to after the show, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. So you just have gave us a home. Colin. We definitely yes. will. You just yes. gave me a, uh, a a homework assignment, and I am more than happy to oblige. Yes, Excellent. definitely. Excellent. Very good. So, so Lou, um, do you remember that story? Do you? When I told that, do you remember? I mean, this was – if. I re- It was a lot of years ago. I used to love that Sanibel Island room. And the guy that booked it and hosted it, his name was Dr. Al. Dr. Al. Yes. And um, he's he's a he was an optometrist or a dentist or something. Yeah. He he was like a professional guy. Yep. Uh, But he really loved doing stand up. And I think he was an optometrist. That Um, sounds familiar. Doesn't that? And uh, that little Sanibel Island room used to be a rip, man. That yeah. was fun, fun, fun days. And, so he uh, didn't just run the room. He was a comedian as well? Yeah. He was a comic and had a big day. Oh. I mean, he there was another guy there that was like the uh, the go-to guy, but his name escapes me. Um, yeah. But uh, that was many, you're right. That was many years ago. Yeah. Um, it was at least 20 years ago because I think my nephew's 40 now. Uh, and this is when he graduated high school. So we're talking twenty three. This is when you went down for ago. his bar mitzvah. No, no, it was, for his, it was his high school graduation. And uh, but the other comedy club was in the Edison Mall, and I can't remember the name of the other comedy oh, club. Oh, okay, that was um, tick 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 tick. Bob Elam. All right, you dropped the name of the guy that ended up <laughs> ignoring me. But, yeah, oh, that's him. He talks like, talk like this. Talk, yeah. And, and, and I, the, I, I work for him a lot. Do you still work for him? <laughs> no. You know no. what, dude? He fell off the face of the earth. Uh, he was doing these um, – for the King Christian comedy tour. Yes, I just okay. saw him online. I looked him up online and saw that that's what that's what his gig is is like but for the I King Christian comedy. I think it's dormant because Oh, really? Well, I I went through that phase in my life. I was yeah. working clean, I was working churches. I was actually uh the associate pastor of a biker church. Really? So, yeah, so that was that was kind of cool. Uh, in fact, it was very cool. It was called the Salvation Saloon. And uh, what we used to do is we used to take our, uh, we had a rock and roll band. And yep. we'd, we'd go into bars on Sunday mornings that were, you know, they just 
they had you know a bar night the night before, and we'd go in there on a Sunday morning and just have a, a rock and roll church service. And uh, I did stand up comedy. Yeah. Uh, I, I read the local, you know, I was, and then I would introduce our speaker or the pastor or whomever. And I did that for several years. Yeah. Well, I toured with those guys for a while, and then like they had one that we were in a big church in Nashville. And I think we were supposed to draw about 2000 and Uh we drew like 300. Oh, wow. And, uh, I didn't hear from him for years and years and still have not really. Yeah. That was, that was late. That was 2005, six, seven, right around in there. Wow. Yeah, that I just remembered because that guy Bob Elam was was the booker at whatever. What was the the name? Do you remember the name of the club at the Edison Mall? Laffins. Laffins. That was it. My sister yeah. was telling me you got to get in there. You got to get in there. Sent him all my stuff. Ignored me. I but, came off stage and he was like, "Oh, you did a great job." But then he went up after me and literally was doing Gilligan's Island jokes. <laughs> it was the hackiest shit I've ever oh, heard, and I'm yeah. like, I couldn't get a call back from this guy. You know, <laughs> you know, I, he's a, he's a nice man, yeah, and but he uh, he overloads his, he just gets his too plate. much going on, yeah, and he just he can't handle himself, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he's yeah. he li- literally is. Uh, I mean, I worked with him twenty times, yeah, and. For a guy to consistently have stage fright as much as he did, dude, I'm telling you, I mean, you know, I'm getting ready to go on. I get a little butterflies in my stomach right oh, before they everyone, call my name. We all do. Yeah. yeah. Right before they call my name and I go up there, I get the first laugh. It's all over with, you know, exactly. put, the plow, put the plow down. We got to field the hope. Yeah. And, uh, but Bob, I'm telling you, dude, this dude would break into a, a like a shivering sweat. Really? Uh, yeah. Before any time he went on, and he was a really nice man, and his wife uh, was just a sweetheart. Yeah. And uh, and but and they tried, they tried. Yeah. I think they might have been too honest or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it is showbiz. You have yeah. you need to have a, a degree of larceny. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're booking. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you so, guys are out. You guys are out of Rhode Island. Yeah. Well, so Rhode Island, New England. Uh, okay. I'm in Rhode Island. He's I'm in, in Connecticut. In Connecticut, and okay. we and we both work all throughout New England because we both have day gigs. But nice. now, so when did you first start comedy, and where was that? Like, w- well, first of all, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Florida? Uh, yeah, I'm. I moved from Tom's River, New Jersey, when I was nine years old. Okay, and, and then I went to. Uh, I started in fourth grade here, in uh, Florida, and I. I lived in a little town called Dunedin, Florida. Oh yeah, I've heard uh, of it. And uh, I got there; it was eight thousand people. It was just—it was the best place in the world to grow up. I mean, it was Florida's school system was really weak back then. Mm-hmm. They were actually ranked fiftieth, okay, but they were happy that they weren't last. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's an actual quote of the movie. I believe it. <laughs> But hey, anyway. we're not that bad. <laughs> we could be less. Yeah, but it was this. It was this little kind of a fishing town, retiree town, and it was just you know. Is it on the west coast? Oh, it's on the west coast, just north of Clearwater, south yep. of Tarpon Springs. Oh, okay, yeah, it's yeah. Right in that, it's a Scottish yeah. town. I had uh, a friend. I had a friend who lived in Spring Hill, which is in that yeah. area too, right? That's right down the road from me now. That's is it really? Uh, World famous for the witness relocation program. Oh, yeah. Is that why you're down there? Everyone there talks like this. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't see nothing. Yeah, anyway. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> it is well, my you are from, heaven. You are from New Jersey. So yeah, right. Yeah, you probably knew a lot of you people did some, down there. You, evidently, you did something in fourth grade that they relocated you to the west coast of Florida. Hey, hey, hey I, I heard a long time ago. <laughs> I heard some things I shouldn't have. What can I tell you? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're not judging. We're not judging. <laughs> That's so, so funny. So anyway, uh, so I grew up here, went to Dunedin High School, and I've it's just been a magical place to live. And um, I actually started in the late 70s. I hosted a show called The Dating Game mm-hmm. at a uh, – I played Jim Lang. I had the glasses yep. and the, big, the whole thing. Uh, at a club called Mr. T's Club 19. Uh, 
I worked with this guy Mark Holland and Jerry Harris, and we did this production where we it was like rated R dated game, you know? Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. And it ran for many many years, and well, I wasn't there for years. I was there probably the first six months, and then I got a job emceeing for the Suncoast Calendar Men, uh, which the male strippers. Yeah, and uh, that, and then I started. Um, uh, in 1983, there was a club in Countryside Mall called Kisses, and it was uh, Ron Bennington from oh, yeah. from the Ron and Ron Fez and Fez show. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it was Ron and Mark Holland, and uh, Jerry wasn't there yet. And they were they opened up this little room. It was a, a restaurant during the day, and mm-hmm. at the end, at, we would bring in do comedy night uh, on the weekends. On Friday and Saturday night, and it's in Florida. Okay, mm-hmm. so the show started at we had we couldn't start the show till like nine thirty. We had to wait for the mall to close and all that stuff. Okay, because yep. we were kind of like the little red haired stepchildren yeah, there. Right, you know? we weren't paying full rent. You know the whole thing. So uh, the they shut the air off at the mall at nine at like eight forty five actually <laughs> in okay? Florida in Florida. <laughs> So by nine thirty, well, the mall's it, closed days. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but they're sweating their asses off, <laughs> right. right? But we were putting a hundred and fifty people Holy in a room crap. that's at one ten. Wow! Right? And it got a little clammy, but it was so. <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually really beautiful. I mean, for as organic as it was, yeah. Bennington was the host, and I was the doorman. And what I would do, Bennington's about five foot seven, I think. And I'm six foot three. Yeah. And I would go behind and we'd turn off all the lights in the club. I'd turn on a flashlight and I would put it up over his head (laughs) and I would walk him to the stage through the crowd (laughs) and I'd walk around behind him and I'd stand there with the light on and he'd turn around and he'd go, that's enough, Lou. And I'd turn the light (laughs) off. And uh, so that I was kind of like the stooge of the club there. I I worked the door. I bounced people, stuff like that. So one night, uh, the uh, there was a guy named John. I'll think of it. Uh, he was scheduled to host that night. Well, the ball joint blew up in his car, and he wasn't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. He had a wheel up in his fender while his car couldn't move. So they go, Lou, you got to go up and open the show. And I'd been doing like some open mics and stuff like that. And I went up and did my best seven minutes, and I freaking killed. It was like, I guess it was just all the pressure and it was just, I just came and bam, 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 just seven minutes. And it was like, I got a great big round of applause. So I'm coming down and I'm like, oh, this was fantastic. And I bring up the next act. I think it was John Manfrelotti. Um, and uh, 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 he was on King of Queens a bunch yeah, of yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great, great guy. sweet Sweetheart of a guy. And uh, like, uh Maybe Jeff Garland was on the same bill. Wow, jeez. Uh, yeah, and these this one, these guys were like, they were it, totally just unknown. Past open, just right. past open mic. Oh yeah, they right, were right. Eat your axe on a great day. Yeah, you know. And um, so anyway, I went. So I come down off stage. I go, well, I know what I'm doing the rest of my life. You know. <laughs> and so then, <laughs> so then I and I and actually I did well like the first six times I went up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I just hit a wall. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I couldn't buy a freaking laugh. I was thinking maybe I should juggle, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's um, uh, it, but you know, persistence outwears resistance. Yeah. And uh, you know, you just work through it, man. And 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 what was beautiful about that was I was kind of like the um, I was I, I I later became the house MC at uh, Ron Bennington's comedy scene down in mm-hmm. Clearwater, and I did all that stuff. I picked the guys up at the airport, yep. uh, took them home, took them shopping, you know, and, and all those like Brian Regan, I stayed three weeks in a comedy condo with him. Wow. We really got to know each other quite well. Always been an absolute scream. Yep. Uh, just a really, I called him Rip Van Regan. Uh, <laughs> this cat, man, uh, he would stay up till four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, every night, every night. And then, would sleep all the way the next until four or five in the afternoon <laughs> until right before showtime. 
he missed everything. You know? right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, wow, really so a funny cool. guy. And um, so yeah, I was I was like kind of running the comedy condo for those guys, and uh, we had Jay Leno there. Uh, we had, um, uh, but Leno was amazing. Uh, and there was some really hilarious, Greg Ray, uh, Randy Hyten, who I think went on to be like some famous impressionist in Europe or something. Really? Now you're talking about in the eighties, right, Lou? Early eighties, 83. Yeah. Cause wow. Leno had already been around for a little bit at that point. So yeah. he, he kind of was already a, a little bit of somebody when he came, country, yeah. when he came oh, yeah, through he- then. He was expensive. I, I, I yeah, well, yeah. I think we, we made money on him. I mean, there were people hanging out the, people hanging out into the sweaty street to see him. You know, yeah, right. yeah. He still, he still drew, and he was the nicest man. Yeah, uh, and Her, just, I've heard he, that about him. Yeah, oh, he's a sweetheart. He just blew the place apart, and uh, uh, his uh, his wife. Uh, was with him. He, he gets done with his set and he shakes hands with some people and he starts calling. His, I think her name's Marla. Marla, yeah. Marla. Yeah. <laughs> He's just wandering through the club, calling his wife. Yeah, and they and they did great. And yeah, um, yeah there was there's a bunch of comics from Florida and uh, a lot of guys that toured. You remember Paul Kelly from Chicago? I know that name. Paul Kelly, fantastic. Now I'm going back into the '80s now. Right, so you guys, right. you know. Well, uh, I mean, we would this is uh, if they were on TV. That's when like yeah. both of us, because we're both in our mid fifties, so okay. that's when both of us really started right. like paying attention. And then, you know, when Rodney started having the uh, young comedian special on HBO, and, uh, yeah, and Evening at the Improv. So that was more, yeah, you know, mid the, to late on A and E, the Evening at the Improv yeah. show, and but that was more more mid to late eighties. Well, VH1 happened. had but, the comedy half hour. That was late eighties. MTV comedy half hour. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, VH1 yeah. had uh, stand up spotlight. Stand up spotlight. That's what it was. Um, but let me ask you this because I want to back up a little bit because you said that you had been doing some open mics before that opportunity. So obviously, that opportunity presented itself. That was the first time you got up on stage and was like, I, this is what I want to do. It counted. How yeah. did you, yeah, how did you start getting into the open mics though? Like, what made you get up that first time? Was it from emceeing the 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 mail review thing? Where oh, did yeah. you have to tell jokes then? Well, I had some stage balls. Yeah. Um, and um, but the other thing was, I've always been a joke teller all, mm-hmm. all my life. My dad told me jo- My dad owned his own car dealership, so we were a very joke oriented family. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that's one of the things salesmen do. They salesmen oh, yeah. do. They tell jokes. They, you know, I, I always thought if I could make a customer laugh three times, it would, they were a lot easier to close to sell. You know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah, I and I used to keep when I was on the floor as a salesperson. I sold Pontiacs, GMCs, Jeeps, Buicks, Toyota. I sold a bunch of different. I've had probably twenty different car jobs over the years. Wow. Uh, you know, I'm one of those split guys. I go on tour for a while. Then I yeah. go, I need to make some money. Blah, 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 you know? yeah, and start selling. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you're talking to two people who I'm in medical sales and he's a service uh, manager for, for, for a dealership, BMW so. dealership. So, so oh, I've been beautiful. in, I've been in the automobile business for 35 years. So I know oh, exactly yeah, what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Uh, we're brothers. We're yeah. brothers. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I know the business. Well, well, well in, uh, you know, and comedy is it's the most wonderful thing in the world being it is making a room full of people laugh and exchanging yeah. energy with them and making them forget their problems for 30 or 45 minutes whatever you're slated for you know that's that's a uh it's the best feeling a, right oh my god and, and and really what it does it, it taps into the actual vibrations of the earth mm. because you're changing you're changing the frequency, the energy and the vibration in that room Mm -hmm. with your humor, with your inflection, with your stories. Okay. And think about it. I mean, very rarely do you get people getting a fight at a comedy club. Right. You know, I mean, sometimes they drink too much or whatever, whatever, whatever. but (coughs) if the show's going well, ain't nobody standing up fight. No, you know, true. You're right. And it, so when you can create, those type of peaceful scenarios, if that's within your power, 
to mm-hmm. do that to a group of people, then by all means, go do it. You know, like I never understood guys that quit comedy. I go, how do you quit comedy? No, I quit. You know, I mean, even if you just do it on a on a smaller level or whatever, yep. you don't right. quit. You know, I, you know, it's funny you bring that up because I just posted almost word for word what you just said last oh, wow. Saturday. I hadn't worked, you know, because summer's usually slow, especially up here. So I yeah. hadn't worked in maybe three weeks. And I, I played up in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh-huh. And I got back and I was like, wow, you know what? Wasn't a huge crowd, maybe 50 people in the place. Yeah. But I said, honestly, it is the best feeling in the world. And I don't know about anyone else. I know from me and Scott, we've said it before. I got into comedy. I wasn't planning on making money. I wasn't planning on being famous. I absolutely loved the feeling Mm -hmm. of walking off stage and knowing that I just made people forget about their problems or their day or whatever is going on in their life by bringing them into my stories and my perspective for you know 45 minutes yep it is the best feeling in the world it's exactly what you said we are social paramedics yeah yeah we show up it's a great idea i gotta remember that social paramedics i like that paramedics um and uh the other thing that that we do is we neutralize situations um and uh it, it, it is that it is that the fact that you that, that you create or you helped create I'm not you know don't hog it all for yourself everybody yeah. on the show got some right exactly yeah but what you do is you kind of create like a vortex of energy with those people and you send it out mm-hmm. and and that's gonna it, it never stops vibrating it's gonna keep rolling for a long long time yeah. so you're actually aiding and healing the planet. Mm-hmm. uh in your own special way so this is it's very important uh to do what we do and um uh and, and i never did it for the money right tim gibson and uh, not tim gibson um tim wilson who mm-hmm. was a brilliant guitar guy fantastic guy he had the best phrase for our level of uh the entertainment industry he called it triple A showbiz. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah. a great idea. Yeah, yeah. that's a Tri- concept. Yeah. Triple A showbiz. It's like we're not big league dudes. You know, yep. we don't have big contracts. We're not bound. But we go out there and play as hard as anybody else. Exactly. You know? yep. Exactly. And, uh, and, you know, every once in a while you get a call up to the big leagues. Hey, you get a TV show or a nice theater or you, a hall. You never know when you're going to get that tap on the shoulder. To, right. Yeah. To go up, you know, and what you were saying about that, sending that healing energy out, I think we we really got to notice it after, you know, 2020 when everything was locked down and people couldn't go out. When we first started doing shows after that, how thankful crowds were and how, you know, after shows, people were coming up to us like, oh, my God, I needed that so much. Thank you. That was great. And we weren't on our game when we first started doing shows after being locked down for several months. You know, I I was my timing was off. I wasn't perfect. Like, you you know, because I hadn't I hadn't done shows on a regular basis in a while and stuff like that. But there was such a, you know, comedy is so such a give and take thing with the audience yeah. that, yeah. you know, they, they were loving what we were giving them in that moment. And we're feeding off that energy back that sure. it was it was so great, you know, as we're going through. And even with the smaller crowds afterwards, they're just coming up to us and they're so appreciative. It was it was unlike anything that I had felt before, you uh, know, because we had never it, been through anything like that before. Well, you know, you guys are from the, the rural or the uh uh, urban Northeast. Yeah. And you guys had more lockdowns and mandates. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little I'm different did. up here. I'm from Florida in the wild <laughs> West, man. <It's> like, <laughs> That's true. We're like, did you wash your hands today? Good. Come on. Yeah. Go. yeah. Come on in. <laughs> yeah. Pack we, in this elevator. <laughs> <laughs> and the comedy thing, the, you know, it petered out for six, eight months. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, there were some guys that held it up because we didn't get mm. shut down. Right, you know? right. Yeah, we did. And, uh, and yeah. we kept, I mean, uh, and there were some people that were very guarded and, you know, mm-hmm. they didn't go out and this and that. And that. But there were other people, and I'm telling you, probably a good majority of the 
Floridians are rooting, tooting, we're going out, we need yeah. beer. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> they're fun people, by the way. They're great oh, yeah. audience here. Listen, um, my my plan is to move to your area when I retire from this medical sales uh, oh. gig. I love the West Coast of Florida. I I love the vibe down there. Yep. The laid back. I love like we do Sunday fun day up here, but you know, you can't do it for more than 3 or 4 months before you start getting snowed on. I love yeah. the fact that you could do it all year round down there. So Yeah, it's yeah, uh, the, you, know, you know, we it's excessively hot from June, July, August, and we're yeah. just now start with the temperatures are just coming out of the mid nineties into the high eighties. Right, right. The high and dude, that's hot, man. After after hundred and twenty days of that shit, you're just yeah. like, oh, why do I live here? Uh, <laughs> well, you know what? And I've said this to people who are up here that go, Oh my God, it's so hot in Florida. And I'm like, uh and what do you do from November, December, January, February, and March? Right. You park your ass inside and crank up the heat. So what's right. the difference if I'm down there in the summer right. and I crank up the AC? Because here's the difference, Lou. Yeah. I don't have to shovel sunshine. <laughs> but true. I got to shovel my fucking driveway every other week when I get That's snow true. up here, you know? Yeah. So you adapt to it. You adapt to it, man. I'm you sure. Know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, it is hard on the old people because uh, some summers – uh it's it's a hundred you know it's 96 yeah. 97 there with the heat index it gets up to like 104 106 and i always want to know where they came up with that heat index i mean what well, they got some fat guy sitting out in a sweater somewhere just, it's like hey waldo it says over here it's 96 but what's it feel what's like? it feel yeah, right. <laughs> it's, oh yeah. man well, it's a little slippery down in the apex man i'm thinking, oh, 104 104 thinking, oh, back <laughs> it's funny because I've always said, "How can you tell it's it's winter in Florida huh? when it's seventy five and the old people are only wearing two layers of of jackets?" <laughs> That's true, man. Well, That's right? True. Well, exactly what you were saying, Lou. I always said, "Why do they say it feels like? If it feels like, isn't that what it is?" <laughs> you know, because we get yeah. that up here in the winter. It's going to be 18, but it'll feel like negative five. Yeah. Then it is fucking negative five. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's if it feels like it, that's what it is. Yeah. At the end I, of the I, day. I, I really do think it. Uh, the same guy that's the same guy that sells umbrellas for cupcakes. Sold them on that idea. <laughs> yeah, yes. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, well said. Well said. Now you you, yeah, you start. Know. You talked about the you know the club you worked in, and you started mm -hmm. with some pretty amazing comics. I mean, Ron Bennington. I, I listened to him. You know, Ben. Uh, you know, Ron and Fez for years on uh, um, XM Radio. They came on right after yeah. Opie and Anthony for years. Yep. Uh, you know, great radio show. Bennington still has a show. I was listening to him today, as a matter of fact. Like you, ma you mentioned Jeff Garlin. Um, I was lucky sure. enough to work with him uh, once sure. before. You know, Jay Leno. I mean, that had to help you know, kind of shape you as a comic being around these guys, oh. you know, and, you know, get you prepared for when you started moving up the ladder. Uh, I, I, I got to give the most massive kudos to Ron Bennington. He actually, he was, I was his house MC for many years. We were friends. I did his radio show dozens of times. Yeah. Uh, I was large Lou on the uh, Ron and Ron show that, morphed into ron and fez okay and fez uh was Fezzy. a lot boy it was a lot boy at the oldsman dealer dealership i used to wholesale out oh really? geez oh my yeah. god fezzy yeah, it's all family man it's all family everything's connections <laughs> that's and, so funny um and those guys uh they were bennington had the most profound effect on my career he taught me point of view mm -hmm. he taught me some timing yeah. uh he, and uh, he and he's just, you know, he's bulletproof. He's the funny. I, I don't know if you've ever seen him do stand up. He's, he's not, just not, a, not really. Just on the radio, dude. He, he's a threat, man. He's oh a yeah, threat, exactly. You know, he's and, so lightning quick. Oh, uh, the thing I always said about Bennington is he already threw out two lines that weren't funny enough to get to the one that he did. Yeah, yeah. And, I, the, and the, the other guy sitting there shining his head, going, "I'm gonna think of something." <laughs> I, I believe I believe got, that go ahead I'm he, sorry he's got two out of the barrel man right at you 
No, because I would listen to him in conversations with other guys on his radio show, mm -hmm. and he is just uh, uh, right off of anything that they say. He comes out with a line that just floors you because of how funny it is. Oh, he, you he, know, and he he really just was. A, so it was so fun to listen to, um, and, you know, and he's just one of those guys. And when he would interview comics, because he had a show for a while where he would interview comics on uh, Road Dog Comedy on XM. Oh, yeah, on XM. And <clears throat> it was it wasn't like an interview. It was like two comics just kind of going at it back and forth yeah. because he was as quick as everybody he brought on. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, it was. Uh, he's a bullet. He's bulletproof. Yeah, we we got some of your guys down by us in the yep. in those early days too. We used to get Kenny Rogerson. Yeah, uh, love yeah. Kenny. Jimmy Tingle. Yeah, uh, yeah. Barry Crimmins. Yeah, Barry yeah. Barry Crimmins, dude. I, I oh. always loved that dude. Did you ever see his movie and all that stuff? Oh yeah. yeah, they call me lucky. In fact, you know what's funny? He was I. We were friends on Facebook. I hadn't seen him since I had first first started. He. He scared me because he was yeah. so fucking angry on stage. He's that fearless. I never fearless. wanted like I was always afraid of him off stage. And then we we reconnected on Facebook probably about, I don't know, two years before he passed away. Yeah. And he erroneously sent me a message about the movie Call Me Lucky. And he immediately said, Ace, I'm so sorry. I sent that to you. It was supposed to be to someone else. It's about a movie I'm working on. If you could do me a favor, please don't talk about it to anyone because it's kind of a secret. And I said, no, no, I, I respect you. No, sure. absolutely. I won't say anything. And right. he goes, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. And right. then, you know, and then he passed like literally right before the yeah. movie came out. Yeah. You know? it was, it was no, the just, movie, just before. Or did the movie come out? The movie before? came out. The movie came out. Yeah. And um, yeah. It wasn't uh, long after that. He passed, yeah, no, he did not bask in its glory very long. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's such and, a great uh, movie, and, and uh, yeah, and, and see that's there's a new brand of comics uh, coming up now, uh, and I call them the brave, honest guys. Mm -hmm. They they're they're oh, they're like too honest, like Louis C.K. Some of his stuff. Yep, it's too honest. You know what I mean? It's like it's, I don't want to know that you think like that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. I, I, I want to love. I want to love and trust you, but <laughs> yeah, right. That's a great way to put that. Yeah. <laughs> but see, some people have said because we've had. I don't know if you're familiar with Bob Marley, guy, oh, yeah. national headliner from yeah, from Maine. But Bob, we had Bob on the show a couple of years ago, and he said the great thing about some of those guys is they're great litigators. They will say something controversial and way out there. But then they will litigate their point to the point where you're like, all right, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I see but where you you're got coming a good from point. and you, you make have a, a good point. point. And yeah. and Louis is one of them. Bill uh, Burr. Rogan is one. Bill Burr, like Chappelle. They say something that might be a little controversial, but then they litigate their point. Even if you don't agree with it, you're sitting there going, all right, I see why he's saying it that way. Sure. It's not just to be controversial. He's making a point. Yeah, shock for the sake of shock is is, is not, yeah, that's not right. Right, they they say work. and Chappelle kind of did it on purpose. Is one of his last specials where he he talked about how he'll write punchlines down and throw them in a bowl. Yeah, and then pull it out and try to write the joke to meet the punchline. Yeah. And he said the punchline first, which was this highly offensive thing, and then he tells a story and brings it back around to the punchline. And I'm sitting there thinking, that's exactly what Bob Marley talked that's about. That's the litigation, Because right. he said the extremely offensive thing first, got the whole crowd going, oh, no, 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 you can't say that. And then he tells you this story that brings it around like, all right, I see what he's talking about. Yeah, well, that's brilliant writing, you know. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, ex Anytime. But, you, but, but that's to your point it's not shock for the sake of shock All right right, I right. just and I, I notice a lot of the young guys they'll say something really outlandish but with no 
reason why. Because exactly. They're trying yeah. to be like Bill Burr or Joe Rogan or you know or well, they, Chappelle. They don't know they how don't to make this, the point yet. Right. They don't right. have the exactly. skill to right. make, to make yeah. that. They point. say the shocking thing without a point. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. They just say the shocking thing to be shocking. Right. Speaking of shocking things, uh, we also used to get uh, Nick DiPaolo down here. All <laughs> oh <time>. yeah. <laughs> and uh, in fact, he's here. He's coming here. In the next couple of weeks at Side Splitters in Tampa. Oh, really? But I met Nick in 1991. I was on tour. Uh, we met in Kansas City. I was playing, uh, I think it was Stanford and Sons Comedy Club out there. Mm-hmm. And Stanford we're, and Sons. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, we're, we're, and it was the night that the Gulf War started. Oh, jeez. And, and remember the national alert. Oh, everybody, it was everything. Yeah, they closed everything down. They canceled the show. Yep. And uh, and Nick and I are in a comedy condo, snowed in in Kansas City. Oh, geez. yeah, because it was in and, January, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I had a car, and I was driving him around. Well, anyway, he it, it, we wound up being really great friends. Yeah. And uh, funny dude, all oh, he was way funny then. I was featuring for him, right? Then, and he was just starting to like road headline, you know? Yeah. Yep. And um, uh, but man, I tell you what, he for for what he's doing now, I mean, he really has come full circle into his character. He's he's just it's beautiful to watch. Yeah, he yeah. Really he's, learned it. He is awesome, and he, he taught me he taught me something that. Um, we're in this comedy condo, right? And we're snowed in. Like my car got like dr- drifted, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, and uh, we we go through the. We're at the condo, and you can comedy condos are where they used to put the comics. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I've yeah. stayed in one We've before. Stayed in them. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it was usually in a, a rental apartment somewhere with you know then, grandma's they're not the, old furniture. And they're not the cleanest accommodations. Not no. always. Not always. Yeah. Well, this one wasn't bad. Okay. But, uh, and Nick and I found, we found some spaghetti and it was in a, a new box. You can't be. Yeah. yeah it wasn't open. open. Okay. So right. all safe. right. Safe. And we found a, a jar of uh, spaghetti sauce, a can of tuna fish, uh, some red peppers, some sugar. And we put together this tuna fish, tomato <laughs> sauce over linguine. Over linguine. <laughs> and, Dude, I'm tell I still make it today. Really? <laughs> it, it, I put tuna fish in the tomato sauce and it's delicious. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's uh, I, I Thank call God my- there wasn't a can of sardines in there. I've that never I've never seen that made on a Gordon Ramsay show, <laughs> no. let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's I I call it the Nick DiPaolo recipe. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's uh yeah, that's definitely a comic recipe right there. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a great dude, man. And yeah. we uh, you know, Florida itself, I was just trying to jot down some of the guys that came out of here. Yeah. And uh, really, it's an amazing uh, thing. Uh, Carrot Top. Wow. Okay? Really? Uh, I, Car- know I remember when I remember when Carrot Top couldn't get a gig. He because he was a he was a prop act feature act. Right. Okay? And he so no up, one he, wanted to follow him. Right. Right. No, no, he, no, he just fuck up the stage. He had his garbage. <laughs> it was a mess. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you need a janitor come in between sets. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, he was a great guy, and, yeah. and once he once he made it to headline, you know, uh, I, I saw that whole transition. Once he made it to headline, then he could mess the stage up any way he wanted. Right. It didn't right. matter. Right, it worked. It worked because yeah. even though his jokes weren't that great, you know, so I used but to do he it. was a genius at prop <laughs> comedy. Well, he was a genius at marketing. He oh, knew yeah. he knew he wasn't, you know, Monet, the strongest okay? joke writer. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. But it just, I used to do an impression of Carrot Top, ladies and gentlemen. My impression of Carrot Top. Hey, you guys, look at this. Hey, you guys, look at this. <laughs> hey, you guys, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the best. He was the best at at prop comedy. He, you know, he, was, he knew he his niche. Fantastic. He was fantastic he, at it. He was a good builder. <laughs> yeah. He was a great builder. He's very imaginative. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and again, a super nice guy. Uh, really easy to get along with. Um, uh, and once he started headlining, it was, you know, he, he did great. Races. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, he was doing all those comedy zones in the Southeast and headlining yep. them. And then he started doing fairs and festivals. And then once he landed in Vegas, that yeah, was it. Yeah, that was man. it. Yeah, it, that's it. It was, believe me, it was a long road. It wasn't oh, yeah. like he showed up with three trunks full of shit and goes, okay, where do I sit? Right. No, right. no, he grounded out on the road. Did yeah, you get there? Out. Yeah. And traveling with all those trunks and all that. <laughs> that had to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dennis and Brian Regan are from here. Are they really? Oh, oh yeah. No. They're both from uh, Miami. Miami Gardens. Yeah. You know what's funny? I love, listen, I love Brian Regan and I got to open up for him once and he was such a sweetheart and a great oh, guy. Yeah. I never understood why Dennis didn't get bigger because I remember very, very beginning of, of Comedy Central. They used to play a lot of Dennis Regan's you yeah. know, stuff. Yeah. And I thought he was hilarious. Oh, he's great. Yeah, he's totally different than Brian. Like, Brian's yeah. silly and Dennis is more, like, clever. Uh, you, but it, his stuff was so good. But yeah. it might be one of those things where crowds just lump the two together and say, we don't yeah. need two of them. Yeah. Well, that, you know, they did a special, that Joker's two of a kind thing. Yep. And uh, that was very good. And I just had lunch with Dennis a couple of days ago, and really? he's really doing splendid. Uh, he's living in the Tampa Bay area again. I'm he sure he's Los doing Andy. fine. He doesn't need my fucking, you know, <laughs> your, your my, approval. My approval, but I just no, no, always no, no, thought no. he no, was I, amazing. I don't, but but I also have uh, summons the same question, you know? Yeah, because there's, there's plenty of talent there. Yeah, but you know, it's like everything, man. You know, water seeks its own level. You know, yeah. uh, some. You know, and he doesn't want the pressure, you know, that like Brian, like has. Brian, yeah. Brian just brings it all on. But and the, there's seven Regan brothers, you know. Right. Yeah. And um, and, uh, you know, Brian just has Brian just has that performance level ability. Yeah. That, right. That Dennis, yeah. Dennis is more laid back. He's, oh, yeah. He, and he's the perfect opener for his brother or anybody. Uh, right. You know, he's just a great act. Yeah. Uh, and a sweet man. But yeah. I don't think he had that, and, and I'm kind of the same way. I'm like Mr. Congeniality of show business, you know. I'm like, yeah. I'm if you like, like me, most, fine. If you don't, fine. Whatever. Oh, yeah. I make sure they like me, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm always like, uh, I'm like the most consistent third place finisher, you know. You know? <laughs> There's the title of the episode. There it is. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like <laughs> we always we always name the episode based on something that comes up during the episode. So this one's gonna be called Lou Angel Wolf, the most the most consistent, consistent third place, place winner. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great That's title. That is yeah. a great title. And so um, so who else who you started you said there were a bunch of comics that came out of guys. Florida. My my best buddy Tom Rhodes. Oh, oh really? I, love I didn't Tom realize Rhodes. he was out of uh, Mr. Rhodes. Uh, Mr. The, Rhodes, his TV yeah. show, yeah. yeah. And Tom Great Rhodes, comic too, fantastic comic, and the most prolific writer. Yeah, of really. any comic that you know, he literally has fifty joke books. Really, and I mean, and they're all like this big and all yeah. full size, written out in longhand. Yep. Okay. Front and back pages. Okay. Artwork, stickers. I mean, these are really each of, each of his joke books is an absolute work of art. And yeah. he's got 50 of them slam full. Okay. And uh, the guy writes all the time. He'll wow. rewrite a joke 15 times before he finds the right word. The right words. And, yeah. and he had he's had such a glorious career. The Mr. Road show, which ran for like 19 weeks or something. Yep. <laughs> and uh, but th that was that was pimp Hollywood that. That. Yeah, and, well, and listen, we've spoken to guys. I mean, one of the most prolific people around here is a guy named Mike Donovan. Yeah, uh, he actually just wrote a comedy book, but he's one of the most prolific writers to the point where he puts in where the inflection is, where the breath is, where the pause is, everything. Right. And here's a guy that, you know, and he told the story on on the podcast. He he got called out to Hollywood to audition for a TV show. And they said, okay, here's the, here's the TV show. It's two guys who are looking for an apartment. They can't find one anywhere, but there's an apartment house for all women. So they decide to dress as women to get an apartment. And okay. he's like, 
I'm from South Boston. I can't wear a fucking <laughs> dress. Are you kidding? I'll never be able to walk through my neighborhood. I'll he, get killed. He's like, if I wear a dress on TV, I'm going to get my ass kicked yeah. when I go home. I can't do this. And they're like, well, we'd love you to read for it. And he goes, I'm not going to do a show where I wear a dress. And they go, could you please just read? He goes, so I read, but I literally just went, uh, yeah, I walked into the room and uh, yeah, I did this. And that. Yeah. He goes, I didn't even try. He goes, I get back to the hotel room and I get a call from my manager who says, yeah, you didn't get the part. And I'm like, yeah, big fucking deal. I didn't want the part <laughs> anyway. He goes, and the part ended up going to Tom Hanks and it was Bosom Buddies. <laughs> it was the show. He goes, but I've had a wonderful career. I can't complain. Yeah, well, you know, well, and, and but, you know, also, too, that men dressing as women, that's Illuminati. uh, uh discipline right there dude <laughs> right that's, yeah. that's them exercising their you know they're making a puppet and right they do. right and yeah they, if you i don't know if you follow and, any of that kind of stuff and but. he didn't oh yeah he didn't want to do that he was like i can't do that well the guy had some, integ- he had some i will get my ass kicked you know and this yeah. was i mean you know 30 that was 1980 something. Yeah, it was 30 30 79 80 ago. so yeah. you know and he, but he, you're right yeah hollywood makes people uh, do uh, things you know. Well, that, you know how bad do you want it? Exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. dance was, monkey. Yeah. Uh, and and real. most of the comics that we've spoken to who live out there, literally say that. Like, I hate it out here, but I've got work. I've got work writing on the show, or I've got sure. work doing this. You know. Sure. Well, uh, I'll keep. I wrote a little short list. Larry the Cable Guy is from yeah. West Palm Beach. Oh wow! Um, I didn't know that. I thought yeah. it was from like Alabama. I thought it was from Arkansas or, or Arkansas. something. Arkansas, yeah, and I heard it's a the character. character yeah. yeah, I have he, heard that. He doesn't from, even talk he, like that, right? He's from West Palm Beach. He's a preacher's <laughs> kid. Yep. He's one of the nicest people on this planet, wow. and the, it's a, it's an act. It's a, yeah, it's, yeah. And Larry I knew the table th- guy is actually based on a real person of a guy named Larry who did cable installations yeah in his neighborhood in his neighborhood and he was one of these like southern pontificators yeah you know and uh and that's where the whole uh because the ron ron and ron show ron bennington yep. is the one that launched larry the cable guy really Jeez. Yep. and les mccurdy who owns mccurdy's comedy theater McCurdy's, in yeah Florida, yeah yeah okay? nicest comedy club on this side of the country absolutely Really run, you. It's it's. I love taping there because you kill every time. Really, uh, it's just perfect. It's a comedian's room set up by a comedian. I'm literally writing all these things down as you say it. Because when I retire, I'm going to be Mike, gonna be Mike fucking, McCarthy works. I'm there. sending my my press kit, my VC, my VHS I with tape. McCarthy. I worked yeah. with McCarthy last time he was there. Yeah. McCarthy yeah. loves it. Well, because he lived down in Florida for like 20 years. So he right, started right. up here, moved to Florida, and now he's back up here. So he's like our Florida guy, you know, right. our okay. connection. Well, he's tell him awesome. Lou, tell him Lou says, hey, knucklehead. Definitely. Oh, I definitely, definitely. will. And um, he knows I love him. And <laughs> But uh, Les McCurdy had Larry... Uh, Larry, the kid, he was he was Dan Whitney at the time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And he used to do uh, Larry, the cable guy, the last five minutes as a character. Just as part of right. his act, not as the whole thing. Wow. And Les McCurdy pulls him aside one night, who's got a master's in theater and all this stuff. And he goes, dude, you need to make that your character. He goes, and he goes, it's you'll love it. it it'll, it'll, yeah. it'll work for you. And he did. And he committed to it. And then he started doing the Larry the Cable Guy commentary on the Ron and Ron show. And then he started taking the commentary out to Bubba and all these yep. other radio yeah, Bubba. Shows. Yeah, And he Bubba did them all. Sponge. He did them all. Bob and Tom, all of them. Yep. Wow. And uh, Dan Whitney, Larry the Cable Guy, is one of the hardest working, most diligent guys. He's up at 4 o'clock in the morning making phone calls, calling people, scheduling interviews. Really? I mean, he's just, he is, he he has what he has because he earned it. Because he worked at I it. Guess yeah, he, it wasn't you know, handed to I him. I guess he's done okay if you're into that type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, last He'll I be checked. in cars 15, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> last I checked, he was worth over $100 million, Wow. So, yeah, so. smart guy. He, he was, uh, and, he, and I like to hear that 
guys that are that successful are also really nice and hard he was workers. A preacher's, That's awesome. He was a preacher's kid. They lived in a nice, clean, little three-bedroom, two-bath house yep. in West Palm Beach. Um, not not even the groovy section of Palm Beach, you know. It was the, right. you know, the outside. The West End is more inland, you know. Right. So, uh, but his mother was a saint, and his dad was just the sweetest guy. His dad used to he had this it was almost like a global conspiracy newsletter oh, that he really sent around way back oh yeah man i'm telling you this i've been into that thing that alternative information yeah uh, for about I, 30 I, years i was so. going to ask that are you do are you do you follow that type of stuff the well i started out a long time ago um you know questioning the masonic lodge and all this kind of yep. stuff yeah yeah you know, the, Mas- the Masons have a, a yeah. deep history when it comes to it's all huge. Dude. It's all yeah. huge. And, it goes and way you know, back. and if we are living in a simulation, if we are watching a movie, okay, it's going to go by a script. Okay, there's good guys, there's bad guys, there's plot point one, there's plot point two, uh, there's gratuitous car chases. Okay, and a lot uh, of us are just background extras. And, and you know what? It's really kind of true. It's really, really? kind of true. Um, uh, it's uh, your your energy here, the, and all of us here are blessed with this ability to make people laugh. That's like our superpower, okay? And then he you has take literally that. said that 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 was his superpower in high school, so that he wouldn't get bullied. It's amazing well, that, that you said it's a superpower because that's what that, Scott's been saying. I've been for saying years. that since we started this podcast. Sure. That I called it my superpower because I, you know I was bullied unmercifully, and yeah. when I realized I had this ability to, <laughs> to make, make people, people laugh. laugh at will, when I wanted yeah. to flip that switch and make people laugh, I could do it, nice. and it felt like a superpower. That yep. I that I could turn that on or off when I wanted to, and it literally felt like it empowered me, and you could do, yeah. I could diffuse situations with yes. it. I could control situations with it, and that that's you just described it but perfectly. I'll, but yeah. I'll bet you, Lou is going to agree with this. There are some people who are threatened by that, and they want to control us. There always will be. Oh sure. Well, yes, and uh, you know if. It's the same thing. Like I heard a great saying a long time ago: "Only argue when you're wrong." Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> which which has that has some degree to it, you know? It's, it's like if you're yeah. right, what the hell's the difference? Just move yeah. on. Just yeah, but exactly. If you feel like arguing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, the 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 what we're going through now and i mean if you look at the news today with the oh, yeah. queen passing on and all these energy shifts and mm-hmm. uh, the skies have been different all summer it's just been the world is going through a big change right now yes and it is. there's good guys and there's bad guys okay there's people that don't care about you at all and there's people that really want to help perpetuate humanity into mm-hmm. a higher plane of existence uh you have your materialistic world versus your spiritual world Yep. Uh, and we consequently are joyfully part of the spirit world yep. where we can make room fulls of people laugh. That's our job. That court jester job never goes it, away. You right. Know? It's always so, been important all through history. We're lifting spirits. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, yep. and that is it's an integral part of our existence. And when you have. uh so if everything else is so confusing, I mean, if you if you look at three news channels for 15 minutes each, you'll go spin around in the yard. Oh, yeah, they're absolutely. all telling the same story, but from three different perspectives. Exactly. If if you're lucky. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, depending on which channels. Yeah, yeah. But, exactly. But what I say is, you know, you're in a vessel that's eventually going to perish. You're not going to keep this body forever. One day it's going to go away mm-hmm. uh, and you don't know what tomorrow has next week you don't know we may not see christmas who knows but what i know is the spirit that lives inside this giant meat bag (laughs) is a special thing it's part of everything Mm -hmm. it's it's part of the ocean it's part of the sea it's part of the wind it's part of the trees every animal we all have this wonderful uh, neutrino driven energy mm-hmm. force that flows through us. 
yeah. and gives us life. And that part of us is going to endure forever. Yeah. So whatever you can do while you're here during earth school yeah. to elevate your vibration, to help other people along, that's your best and highest use. So this whole thing has kind of come around uh, as a, a philosophical uh, point of view, almost. I, I work uh, more often now that I kind of let go of what the gig was and mm -hmm. I'm getting better gigs, yeah. you know? So, uh, but, but having that mindset that I'm here, I'm here to help. Yeah. I, I got that, my little social paramedic thing. I'm here to help. And um, that's such a know. great way to look at things because, you know, again, like I said, I didn't get into this be famous. I didn't. I mean, would it have been great? Yeah. Did I see friends of mine that got famous? Yeah. It, do I make a lot of money at it? No. But right. I still get to do the same job that sure. Bill Burr did at Fenway Park three weeks ago. Right. I just do it on a smaller and scale. I, I'm doing it in front of a couple of hundred And I people. guarantee you when you walk off of a stage in front of 120 people, that like that show last weekend in yeah. New Hampshire, when you walked off the stage, you felt the same way inside you that Bill Burr did when he walked off of Fenway yeah, Park. Sure. Like, I just made all these people... Yep. feel better yep. about their week, their lives, where they are. You know, and I did that for those people. And that's actually why I've worked on shows where, you know, because as comics, we always tend to focus on the negative. So you can have 199 out of 200 people laughing. Oh, God. But well, you're focused on that one person <laughs> that in the one crowd. one asshole that's not who's not no, laughing. But I won't call him an asshole because what happened, I, and I've told I this will. story before, I was doing a show one night. I was closing. Uh, it was a Catch a Rising Star up in uh, up in Lincoln. Yep. And I was closing, and two comics went up before me. And what happened was, twenty people walked in, but they walked into the show late, maybe ten minutes late. Uh -huh. And there was a guy at the front of the table of twenty that had his hands crossed the whole time. He looked just pissed off. Yeah. And, of course, because he's cross-armed cross, cross -armed and he looks pissed off, the first two comics tried to bust his balls. And he wasn't having it. To the point where the host of the show comes off and goes, that guy in the front's an asshole. And I'm like, oh, all right. My degree's in psychology. I went to school for psychology. So nice. I'm sitting there instead looking at it as, wait a minute. 20 people just walked in late. I don't know if this is true, but in my mind, I tried to treat it as 20 people walked in late. This poor bastard got stuck at the front of the table, and he might have been the one going, guys, we're going to be late. Like, come on, let's go. Right. And yeah. now all of a sudden, he's stuck at the front of the table, and the first two comics are busting his balls. So right. instead exactly of busting, what he didn't want to happen. Exactly, right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's what he was afraid of. And again, right. I built this whole story in my head. But it helped me to not pick on him to the Good. point where every time I would make a point, I would look at him and go, you know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, now I'm bringing him onto my side. Right. By the right. end of the show, his arms were uncrossed. He was having a good time. Good. Again, I don't know what the backstory was, but that was my superpower that day. I was yeah. able to look at the fact that maybe this guy was just having a bad day. And I was able to bring him around to having a better night. And that's, that's what we do. I yeah. raise the, vi you know, to your point, I raise yeah. the vibration. There you go, That's buddy. my goal. And I would have fucking picked on him. Yeah, of like, course no, you would have. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. no, I mean, you know, 10 years ago I would have. But now, yeah, you know, over time and with working with people like yourself, Ace, and stuff like that, you tend to, you learn, you like learn. you said, from the people that you've worked with that mm -hmm. mentored you. Because Ace, when I met Ace, he had been doing comedy for 12 years. Right. And I, I was new. And he, you know, him and I became friends. And I've learned a lot from him and the other headliners I worked with so that I can look at those situations differently. I bring my own experience along with what they've told me. And I look at it the same way now. And I look at a situation like that and I'm like, okay, regardless of his arms are folded or not, my job tonight is to make sure he has a good time. Exactly. So Very what do good. I have to do to make sure he has fun tonight? That's a, that, you see, when you when you have that scope, when you have that wherewithal, yeah. and you're in the you're in the moment of where you are, uh, you can make much better decisions. Yeah, one exactly. of my 
one of my favorite mentors uh, was Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong was, mm -hmm. I got to open for him many times. That's cool. Uh, all throughout the South. Uh, fantastic dude. He stole a joke from me, which was so flattering. <laughs> and, um, that's one of the few times you don't get mad when someone yeah, right. steals a joke <laughs> yeah right him. when it's tommy John. you probably tell it better tommy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. i'd be telling everybody guess who stole a joke from me <laughs> I, oh yeah i do I, oh, of I, course I, I, yeah of course. and i stole i stole three tommy chung t-shirts for the joke yeah there, <laughs> there, you, go. Go. there you go fair fair enough but there was a guy named jimmy wiggins who died a little a couple years ago he was the last hippie in america that was his thing he was this little five foot six long ponytail braided white hair he was just this wonderful little gnome and he was mm -hmm. really wise and uh i'm five foot six by the way but i'll take the gnome reference you don't have a you know, i don't have a ponytail you don't have a white ponytail yeah. so you're safe <laughs> oh, that's all right well, no i'm busting balls <laughs> okay um so but and he had this he had this real deep voice he could like he could have narrated like you know, documentaries, and <laughs> BBC. Hey, who would have thought that the British broadcasting system using those initials all those years, who would have known this late in the game that BBC would be totally something else <laughs> on the porn sites? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, don't That's Google. True. Don't Google BBC. Yeah, no, no, because <laughs> the first few idea. hits on Google are not British broadcasting. <laughs> no, no. That's but funny. Wiggins. Wiggins. Uh, we worked together at the Treehouse. Up in Connecticut. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love all those guys up there. Yeah. Uh, Brad? Yeah, yeah Brad, Brad Axelrod. Axelrod. Brad yeah, yeah. Axelrod. Great guy. Yep. And um, uh, I, I went up on a Thursday night. I had kind of a, a decent set, but not a little jumpy, a little spotty. Yep. And Wiggins, uh, we're having lunch the next day. And I go, I said, Jimmy, I said, I saw you watching my set. I go, what'd you think? He go, he says, you're a little jumpy, son. He goes, just remember, your comedy audience is like a clitoris. He goes, you just don't jump right on it. You kind of bump around there, bump around the side. Bump <laughs> and he goes, and then he goes, then you start with a slower motion. And the next thing you know, you're a hero. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Well, maybe that should be the title of the episode. Comedy, I don't know. <laughs> Lou Angel Wolf. Comedy is like a clitoris. <laughs> yeah, I think not Apple. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not my quote. I, I, yeah, I think Apple won't allow that one to <laughs> yeah, go through. No, I don't think <laughs> they would. <laughs> Most consistent third place finisher is. That's, yeah, I love exactly. that one. I love that one. So, Lou, let me ask you this, because yeah. we always wrap up the show by asking our guests this. Uh, and, and Our favorite this, question. Everyone has one. If you've been doing comedy more than six months, you have at least one of these stories. Uh -huh. uh, we like to ask our guests about the, the funny bad gig story, and that's the gig that was so bad the night of it made you want to quit comedy. But you, further, you were thinking about car sales oh, full time. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but I, but the, further, the further away you get from it, now all of a sudden, it's like six weeks later, you're sitting in a green room with other comics and everyone's telling war stories of, oh, my God, this horrible gig I did last month. You're never going to believe it. And you're like, you think that's bad? <laughs> Listen to this. Okay, well, here you go. Here's mine. All right. <laughs> I'm on tour with Sally Kellerman. I'm yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, she was hot lips. Just passed Nashville. away last yes. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, an, um, just a, a wonderful right? lady, just a sweetie pie. She sings, she dances, she got a piano player. I'm going up, and we're touring Florida. Mm -hmm. We do we do uh, Brooksville up here where I'm, near where I'm at now, and we do Orlando. We do Daytona Beach, smashing it every night. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Friday, n Saturday. We're at century village in north miami beach and if you don't know what that is it's these catacombs of death that they have they're these old brown condominiums one and two bedrooms mm -hmm. that people from baltimore and trenton and all these <laughs> that's their vacation homes <laughs> that's, that's where they retire to Oh, oh, even shit. better. Okay. <laughs> even and, the, better. and what they do is they sell it to some wobbly old bastard, and he lives there till he dies, and they come scoop the body out. Then they sell it the it next day. Up, sell it to some other miserable old bastard from, <laughs> you know, just, just like the pissed off 
Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania club, you know? Yep. Anyway, all these jerk offs from Philadelphia. <laughs> anyway, and they all live there together. And right. Part of their living there, a part of their HOA fee is entertainment. Entertainment. <laughs> okay. And going. they had this old theater there, beautiful old theater the, with that real skyrockety seal, seating, you know, where yep. they're oh, really yeah. looking yeah. down on you. And uh, I'm opening for Sally. She looks beautiful. The piano player's out there, and I'm 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 nervous, dude. And uh, and the and so the stage manager comes up to me. He goes, "Hey, look." He goes, uh, "He goes. I just want you to know the comedians don't usually do that good here. He goes, but the <laughs> one thing you got to do, you got to do your time. You can't go short. You you got to do thirty minutes, or he goes, I I I won't pay you. How about right. that?" He goes, just do your time. He goes, even if you're dying, it doesn't matter. He goes, <laughs> you just got to do the said, time. Yeah. He said, because in their Brenner HOA fees, time. in their HOA fees, it says a 30 minute fucking show. <laughs> no matter how bad it is, it's got to be 30 minutes. And they don't yeah. care five minutes in. If you're dying, you nope. got to do another 25. Yeah. Oh, my God. David Brenner had trouble there. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. Holy shit. Just these old, miserable yeah. East Coast Jews. And, <laughs> you know, anyway, I'm up there. I, and so they bring me out, and, I, and I'm sweating, man. My, I'm telling, the back of my ass, I'm just, I'm just sweating. <laughs> and I go out there, and I hit them with my best, like, jokey jokes and street jokes. And I just want to make them laugh, you know? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not making art. I'm not making a right. statement. I yeah. just plow. So I'm out there. Boom, 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 boom. And a little chuckle here, a little chuckle there, a little chuckle here. Somebody blowing their nose over here. <laughs> They're packing cigarettes over there. Anyway, I go down. I go, I so I look down at my, there's a clock on stage. So I look down at it. I'm thinking, ah, I've had, I'm surely, this, I did 20. Uh, I'll just, I'll just. I'll just dick joke my way to the end. So I've done seven minutes. <laughs> oh, I've done. Isn't it that's the worst yeah. feeling? And I'm just digging for fire, man. I'm just doing anything I yep. can do. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, about the about the 17, 18 minute mark of my show, uh, this old guy gets up from like the tenth row back, and he pops his walker out. Just then comes down the stairs, right. And he walks down the stairs and he comes and he stands right in front of me. Okay. I'm on stage. There's crowds like this. And this guy's right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I walk away. I said, yes, sir. He goes, I'm 87 years old. I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he turned around and walked Click, 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 click. <laughs> he, he walked back. He, he came all the way big, down just to say that, and then walked he back. Came back. He came down to insult me, and then walked out. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> he got a, he got a bigger laugh than me. Of hey, course. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, and dude! It's like I'm I'm driving. I called the Booker, who was a buddy of mine. <laughs> and I go. I said, Alan, Alan. I, I says, there's only two bullets left. There's only two left. <laughs> I'm giving it another spin. I'm giving it another spin. Oh, my God. It was. I'm telling you, dude. Oh, my word. I mean, not that it made me want to quit doing show business. No, it no. Made me but made want to quit doing Jewish comedy clubs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's. But isn't that. That's the story you tell when people start talking about shitty gigs, right? And, and, and you know. And, of course, there's a victim. You know, the old. They were just. They were just miserable. They were miserable when they got there. Right. And, yeah, and right. they didn't even like Sally Kellerman. You know, they, really? stared at her, they stared at her like a turd on a plate. Really? You know? So, yeah. But, yeah. Wow. And he did 29 minutes, 59 seconds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and said, yeah. thank you, good night. Yeah. And the hey, thank you, you, good what, night no. was the last second. <laughs> the stage manager shook my hand when I came off. He goes, dude, he goes, you paid some dues tonight. I go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know what you did in another life, but man, you just paid for it. You just earned. <laughs> you just earned your spot in heaven, my friend. <laughs> oh, good for you. That's, that's a awesome. good. That's a good story. That's one of those ones you do not forget, man. Yeah, that's for no. sure. That sting doesn't go away quick. That's awesome, Lou. That that's that's some great stuff, man. What a career you've had. Uh, you know, uh, it's, well, it's, it's not it's, over. So don't say it like that. No, up to up to now. Up to now. What an amazing career. I'm 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 hoping one day I get to sit on some 
somebody else's podcast and tell these amazing Talk stories. About that, yeah. You know, like 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 you have. That, that's some well, great I like stuff. I like your show and Thanks, uh, any man. of the guys I mentioned tonight. Most of them will do your show if you're interested. So. Oh, I'd, I'd love. love to. I, actually, it's funny as you started dropping some of the names. I was like, oh my god, I'd love to be able to get some of those guys on if if yeah. he uh, has an in with them. We. This is it. It like we said, you know, it's funny because when I, you know, when I was talking to Lou on email earlier this week, he was like, you know, do I have to prepare anything? What do you guys want to? It's very conversational. It's really, it's just about you and your career. We're we, the whole concept when Scott started the show was behind the funny. Everyone knows what comics do up on stage, but no one really knows what's behind it. Why did they get started? Who are these guys off the stage? What and, what made them try comedy to begin with? And the know? hang that we have in the green room when we're all telling right. stories, that's what we wanted to capture on this show. That's and beautiful, so man. That's we good, we hope you had target. a good time. Good target. Thank you. I'll be no, happy. Thank, to, whatever dude, you need, buddy. Dude, Lou, yeah. Lou, it was fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. You guys against, are man. great, you, man. You got a good great. show. Thank you so much. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Can we uh, promote anything for you? Yeah. Do you have a website or any um, shows coming up? Or Okay, yes. McCurdy's Comedy Theater, yeah. uh, September 26th through October 2nd. I'm there with Scott Novotny. Okay. Uh, and uh, McCurdy's Comedy Theater in Sarasota. It's a beautiful room. Uh, yeah, it is. I'm taping all week, so go, dog, go. That's awesome. I, yeah, check out, check out. I'll put a link to the that show in the show notes. So yeah. anybody beautiful. listening, uh, you, just tickets. go right to the show notes. You can uh, go right, get your tickets right there. Um, definitely check Lou out. You will not be disappointed. Um, and he is right, McCurdy's great place to go see a show yeah. my mother and father-in-law spend their winters in sarasota so i've been uh, down there a fantastic place um yeah. you will have a blast so d definitely go check that out and lou do you have a website um my facebook mostly on oh, facebook um, and uh uh i, I do have louangelwolf.com it's currently dormant i've yeah. really slacked on that uh, I got a 23 year old computer genius son who can't get to his dad's website. <laughs> so. right, right now, you'll get more information if you just Google BBC than you will if you go to Lou Angel. Oh, all right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, so we get a ton of content there. Yeah. You get a lot more content yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah. No. No, so check out Lou's, uh, Lou's uh, Facebook page then, Lou Angel Wolf. Uh, and I, got a, I got a bunch of uh, podcast stuff up on oh, like, yeah. YouTube. Uh, I had Lutopia.com and okay. uh, IMHO.love, which is in my humble opinion, dot love. Uh, that was all, that was basically about uh, UFOs and oh, uh, really? all that kind of stuff. And uh, Lutopia was a, a variety of things. Yeah. Uh, I did, it's later than you think. Uh, all kind. I've I've been on the radio a lot, and um, yeah, nobody listens to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, you're, hopefully, our listeners will listen to it because because uh, man, you're not into paranormal so investigations, are you? Uh, lightly. That's yeah, kind of like right. uh, that's a that's a side road. That's that's a that's too much. Well, you know what happened was a couple of years ago we had a friend of ours who's also a stand up comic but does paranormal investigations he came on for a show and he shared some like evps and stuff like that yeah and it was the first time i ever saw scott quiet for a good 25 minutes during the show wow. breaking out into a cold sweat and i really? looked at him i go you all right and he goes i don't like this shit and ever uh, since then now what i do is uh so you got to listen in the month of october we call it scottober and we book paranormal guests. So like last yeah, year. Because my former friend, Ace Aceto <laughs> over here, <laughs> loves paranormal. So they booked the whole month because one of our super fans, Jen, said you should call it Scotttober. Yes. You know, so, just so they can make me shit my pants so every episode for a month. Last year we had Tom on. We had Jason Hawes from Ghost Hunters. We yeah. had Jason's daughter, Satori, and her boyfriend who have a paranormal museum. Uh, so we just booked all paranormal guests last year. And sure. now this year, we're going into October, and we've got uh, J uh, Satori and, um, and Cody, Corey, Cody coming back. We've got uh, Ken DaCosta, who runs a, a local paranormal group. We actually did a paranormal investigation two weeks ago at oh, a wow. place... 
It's one of the most haunted places in New England, and yeah. we did it. It's right down the street from me. You know how you said you're lightly into it? Well, I'm less than lightly yeah. into it. <laughs> but, uh, but we have them. We have uh, Andrea Perone coming on, who was the actual oldest daughter. If you've ever seen the movie The Conjuring, she was that was based on a true story. Oh, wow. She was the oldest daughter in that family. That lived, lived in the house in that when house. that happened. So we wow. have her coming on. And then I just reached out to a guy named Joe Chin. If you were a fan of Ghost Hunters, he started on Ghost Hunters, but then uh, went to Ghost Hunters International when they went overseas and did paranormal investigations. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be uh, we're going to be, gonna doing be some paranormal fucking stuff. awesome. <laughs> yeah. And Scott is not looking forward to the month of Scottober. <laughs> I just don't look good in alien green light. That's all. That's my problem. No, we <laughs> love to have you back on. Okay. Just to talk about the I would paranormal talk about, and I would UFOs talk about aliens stuff. with yeah. you. Well, you know, absolutely. Definitely. Dude, I'd love to talk about that stuff. And I did enough of it tonight, and I kind of broke a show business rule because Robert De Niro told me never drop names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? The yo, names. Yo, you're good. Yo, you're you good. Listen, Lou, the, but the Lou. names you dropped were amazing, and we'd love. We seriously, I'll reach out to you and see if any of those uh, those folks that yeah, you definitely. Reached, that you Great mentioned storytellers there, buddy. Would right. like yeah. to come on. You so. too, Lou. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being on. We really appreciate it. And uh and this episode will be out uh next Thursday. So okay, we'll cool. uh, we'll tag you in a post and let you know when it's out. Beautiful. That's great. All right. Thanks, Thanks again, so much, Lou. Lou. We God really bless. appreciate it. Have a great night. All right. And that was Lou Angel Wolf. What a great storyteller. Dude, I fucking I I knew, like I said. When I worked with him 20 something years ago, he was you worked with him in Florida that he a, was the so. one that made me feel like I was a comic. Like well, the you, other guy had made me feel like a piece of shit and, and you, he was like, but no, you, man, you did a, you had a great set. But you, you can also good. tell that that's because he was treated that way. Right. By right. a lot of the people he came up <clears> with. Like he talked about Ron Bennington being a big mentor of his. Exactly. And working around these other guys. And they all treated him with a level of respect, even though he was the guy that was walking them to the stage. Exactly. And doing these different jobs in the opener. They still treated him with a level of respect. So that's why when it was kind of his turn to do that, when you were down there, he, he did did the, the same, same thing exactly. and he is still that way now which yeah. is i i love and it's like you had said it's great when you hear about guys that are are nice guys um and i think that we've found over the years 99 percent of comics are are actually really good guys yeah absolutely and, and i think that's because most most comedians don't have the highest self-esteem so um right, right. but we I, I think in general comedians are very nice people yeah you know for um, the most part yeah absolutely I, I was around a large group last weekend mm -hmm. um you know we we said goodbye to the great dick doherty dick doherty yeah. and there was a lot of comedians there guys yeah. from mike donovan who you mentioned tonight right all right. the way down to new comics that have only been there for a couple of years and everyone was hanging out afterwards just talking to each other right and nobody talked to anybody any differently or yeah. anything like yeah. that it was everyone just was on the comics. same page and you know and that's what i love about this community it's absolutely a brotherhood and sisterhood it is you know yeah it is and it, it's once you've started getting on stage you know everyone looks at the first time okay he tried it let's see what goes on but if they see someone that's constantly getting up yeah and trying and working at it you know you gain their respect absolutely and yeah. that's one of the things i've noticed and that's what i love about this well, listen, folks, we absolutely love that you are listening. We love the folks that watch tonight on the Facebook live stream. Uh, please, if you're, as we said in the beginning of the show, if you enjoy the show, tell a friend about us. Share the podcast with friends. Uh, this is, we love doing this. And, uh, and we, we're going to continue to keep getting yeah. guests. And it believe me, as he was dropping names, I was I was taking I, notes in my head like I could oh my god see you go if he could get Dennis Regan to come on or Larry the Cable Guy or any of those guys Dude, I would absolutely he love just had that. lunch with Dennis Regan yeah exactly let's work and that I love Dennis Regan a Ace has done an amazing job with guests you know other than October uh, he's done a great <laughs> That's job be with amazing. guests are you kidding um, 
You know, no. so and and like he said, we love doing this. So um, yeah, yeah, tell a friend if you haven't had a chance to, to give us a five star review wherever you download your podcast. Please do that. It's such a huge it's help. A to huge us. help with the algorithms. Uh, it's it, not just to. It's not to feed our egos. Not it, at all. If but, you give a five star written review. We literally, just from one five-star written review in a week, we literally shoot up in the charts. And it, and it helps more people find us. So if someone types right. in comedy podcasts and we've got a couple of five-star written reviews, it actually helps more people see it. So that's the only reason why we're asking for it. L- literally, it, it, he's right. Yeah. You know, it, it's of nothing to do with us. <laughs> of course it's nothing to do with us. What's wrong with you, Scott Higgins? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get a meal break. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it, yeah, no. it's not an ego Please. thing. It literally just helps us with the charts and yeah. have, helping other people discover discover us. So we appreciate it. We love having you guys with us every week. We we love having the guests we've had on lately, and we're just going to keep putting these out. On uh, on the twenty first, we're going to be recording with Wendy Liebman. Ugh. If you first of all, if you're not familiar with Wendy Liebman, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because she is a pioneer of comedy, one of the first people on Comedy Central. Huge, huge, uh, uh, just hilarious comic. Um, and then a couple of years ago, she was on America's Got Talent, made it almost, I think, to the semifinals of the finals. Uh, she is just amazing. I am so excited to get her on because I've been trying to get her on for at least two years. She is one of those that I feel like broke that ground where it's no longer of she's a funny female comic like a a Kathleen Madigan exactly she broke she bridged that gap where it's just a funny comedian yep exactly so we're gonna have Wendy Liebman on on the 21st and then on the 28th we've got our buddy Jimmy Cash who we've been working on for so long Jimmy Cash is a hilarious comic but he's also blown up on on uh, TikTok as the janitor with stamina. He does these hilarious videos as being a janitor. Uh, and then we roll right into Scott Tober, which, like wow. I said, we've got some great guests coming up with that. So, so folks, please, again, tell a friend about us. Uh, five-star written review. If you really want to support the podcast, because it does cost us money to do this, go to our Patreon page. It's www.patreon.com forward slash behind the funny. You'll get some merchandise as well as uh, bonus content that we've uh, that we've recorded as well. So uh, please, please, any help that you can give to the podcast, we really appreciate it. Not that we mean to beg, but please. <laughs> I know. Please, I feel please, like I'm please. on my knees begging. No, but again, we want we you know we want more people. No, to hear we this. we want to continue to bring you guys some great episodes. And Lou said it tonight, and it like, does cost money. So anything you could do is a big help. But how many people have said on the podcast uh, guests who've said, "Oh my God, this was so much fun." We want other people to hear this. So yeah, that's exactly. the reason why we beg every week. Other than that, we will talk to you next week.